The four foot, very tricky conditions, big holes, big banks. It depends what the athletes do. They'll be talking to their coaches to make sure they set the right plan to finish up the front. That is the key. Board, swim, ski is race one. You can't win the whole round there, but you can put yourself in a good spot. Race two will be handicapped by two second increments depending on where you finished in race one. So if you do well in race one, you get a head start in race two. But as we saw from round two, you don't have to go off first to take it out. That is for sure. A top 10 finish will be enough. Let's take a look at the start list. 21 on the start line now. We had some close racing and qualifying, so we've got an extra starter here today. Good to see Ali Britton back into it. Brielle Cooper, the defending women's champion, is there. Higgison, Massey, McKenzie, Carly Nerven out from Brittany Pierce from Wanda, working under the great Nathan Smith, their former Australian champion himself, and professional Ironman Roger Scott Smith, Wellborn, and Bay Wilden Snedden is number 21. So a lot of big names and a lot of girls missing. No Georgia Miller, the series leader at the moment. No Harriet Brown. And we will see what happens. The girls are set. Pursuit format off and away. And they're racing straight into the water. And it's a long run from the start line into the water at the moment. Surface Paradise has got a little bank. And you can see the girls starting to fan out. And Danielle McKenzie and Bay Wilden standing in the middle of the screen have got the best of it. Well, the left-hand side, Josh, has been the best side throughout the course of the day. So the girls will be looking to make the move. Really depends where you line up on that start line to ensure your path that you take. And we'll see what happens as the girls girls start to head oh, through the a first break. A little Lana mistake Rogers. from Lana Rogers, but a good enough starter still got her in the mix and really trying to work hard through this first little shore break. We'll see who we get out in front. So Naomi Scott on the left, white board there, then Danielle McKenzie on the right, then in the middle, Gemma Smith, the pink board on the far right-hand side. It's Lizzie Wellborn on the yellow. Behind her is Lana Rogers, the defending Australian champion. The far right side, Brielle Cooper, the defending series champion. Courtney Hancock with the orange board back on the left and that is how they start they've formed their way into two little columns there two of the stronger girls on the front Lizzie Wellborn Danielle McKenzie probably the two best board paddlers over the last five years in the sport they're dragging the rest of the field out and it seems like three of the girls have been left for dead out the back and there is a big gap between the back of the pack and those three well Josh we spoke earlier through the recap about Hannah Scully and Hannah Scully won the last round she's probably the most informed board paddler this season didn't make it through qualifying today so won the last round and didn't make it into the Kellogg's race for this weekend. That's very very tough and of course she wasn't sitting high enough in the series to get an automatic start so she has to do it the hard way on the on the Friday afternoon before the weekend race two three sometimes four times to get herself just through to this race here while the other girls the girls in the blue tops there like Lana Rogers like Naomi Scott in the background they sit back relax watch and get themselves set for just one race. You can see the unstoppable Stoppable clock down in the corner there. Proudly brought to you by Nutrigrain there. We will time this all out and we'll have the gaps for the girls as they leave for race two. But it's Danielle McKenzie leading from Lizzie Wellborn. Naomi Scott, Lana Rogers there. Just behind her, it looks like Bay Wilton Stedden and Brielle Cooper pushing their way through the field. Carly Nerthens there and all the big guns. Tiani Massey, Electra Outram as well. Kirsty Higgison, Brittany Pierce, and on the back of the pack, that looks like Tian Raymond trying to hang on at the moment. So a long, long way down in sort of, well, 17th or 18th place going around that first board can. Well, had a very, very bad start off the beach, Josh. We could see her well out the back door and there is a couple of girls behind. She's managed now to pull herself back up onto the back of the pack. But as these girls start to head home with the runs, we see Lizzie Wellborn up and starting to work away. Some really good lifts underneath her. The girls caught behind just going around the cans are certainly going to struggle to catch back. Up. Talk us through some of these girls here. You can see they, they just get a little lift and then they stop paddling and let the board run. What, what are they doing there? They're obviously doing it very well. Well, Danielle McKenzie there, she lifts the rating as we see her come off the back of the run, we'll see her lift the rating as the next swell works up underneath her. We see her start to work to try and get down this one. And this one may turn into a way for us. So she goes up with it. Once the board starts to run, she can sit back a little bit. But at this stage, working very, very hard to make sure she gets over the top. Now, these swells here at Surface Paradise are filling back up. You might get a good lift out of it. It will fill back up. So the girls will work again as Lizzie Wellborn comes down a wave. And then there's 10 on the next oh. 
Oh, they're all on that next one. You've got to be on it there. Look, we've got two, four, six, eight, ten on the next wave. So that's your top 12. A couple have missed it, but a couple of big names are there as well. Carly Nerven, Tiani Massey, Lana Rogers, and it is Lizzie Wellborn. She has come over the top of Danielle McKenzie's wave there. So it's Wellborn in one. McKenzie's now in two. Kirsty Higgison's there. Brielle Cooper's there. I'm trying to pick all the girls on the boards as they get up, go into transition. The handlers are all over the shop, trying to get the boards out of the way and give everyone a fair run up the beach. But at this point, no Maddie Dunn. We haven't seen her so far. And it's Lizzie Wellborn who lead off the board, heading into the swim with Mackenzie hot on her heels. Well, it was great work from those two, Josh, to set this race up early. But here are our chasers starting to work through now and have really closed the gap. Maddie Dunn is in the mix. So Maddie Dunn needs to make this weekend one of her best yet to ensure she can get a jump on Georgia Miller as Courtney Hancock and Bay Wilden Snedden come around. They were just off the back of that wave. Then there's Brittany Pierce there, Emily Doyle, Electra Outram up and around, and Jade Hardstaff as well. So they're the girls that missed the wave, and they're going to have to work extra hard in here at the moment as they start to push in and around. It looks like Kaylee Cox has still got some work to do, and Tiana Raymond is a long, long way down, and she's facing a 40-second gap if she's last place in this first race. And I'm not saying that it's impossible, but it would be a big, big task to try and drag 40 seconds back on the best iron women in the business. Certainly is, Josh. We spoke at the start of this race saying you couldn't win it here and you can't. And if you are a long way down, you've got to make sure you don't burn too many bickies so that you've got nothing left for this second race. What's more important, finishing with the two-second gap, and that's what you have to work out, or a 40-second head start, or ensuring you've got enough energy to get yourself through that second race. Yeah, good plan from a master coach in Jack Hansen. Lizzie Wellborn continues to lead on the way out. It looks like Lana Rogers has gone straight past Danielle McKenzie into second place there. Then Naomi Scott onto their heels in third. So strong swimming from Rogers and Scott, and that really is, well, that's their basis. That's how they perform so well in this Iron Woman leg. They know they've just got to manage the ski and board, and they've really got to use their swim to their advantage. It's an old ad that Kai Hurst used to use. He used to wait and wait and bide his time and then attack in the swim. Well, Naomi Scott, she has been on fire and racing very, very well this summer, Josh. Unfortunately for her, her skills have probably let her down a little bit. And every time there's been a wave, she seems to get hit and get found in the wrong position. So working her way back up to the front of another round and another race is a great thing for the youngster in Naomi Scott. Yeah, you're spot on there. She's been fantastic at the front of a lot of these races, but it's just been one moment in every race that may have cost her every time. And it looks like Emma... Emma Dix moved her way up into fourth place now. So that's a great swim from Emma Dick, who's had a tough couple of seasons with injury and illness. And it looks like she's just coming back into old form and really starting to work her way to the top of the sport at the moment. She's moved her way into fourth place there. So it's Scott in the lead. Lana Rogers in second place. Lizzie Wellborn in third. Emma Dick in fourth there. Maybe Maddie Dunn has moved up into sixth. So I said I hadn't seen her, but there she is at the moment. Around goes Tiani Massey and now Outside her, Gemma Smith, Courtney Hancock has jumped on the tail of Carly Nerven alongside her as well. And Brielle Cooper's in there. And there's a bit of thrash, crash and bash. Kirsty Higgison is just on the tail. And Emily Doyle's swimming her way through the field with Bay Wilden Snedden, Electra Outram and Brittany Pierce there. Still no sign of Hayley Cox or Tian Raymond as the pack starts to come together. And we've got maybe 17 in this lead pack at the moment. And you know if a wave made a difference in the board, it's definitely going to make a difference in well, the swim. Well, Naomi Scott is trying to work her way up and away in this one, Josh. She's done very, very well so far in this swim to put herself out in front and now goes to a body length lead. So Naomi Scott starting to work away from our pack and from our chasers. Lizzie Wellborn has probably impressed me the most in this swim, managing to stay onto the feet, not letting the likes of Lana Rogers and Naomi Scott, who are known as stronger swimmers, to get away. Yeah, that's it. She's really held her own and, you know, we spoke earlier about maybe biding your time and resting up for race two and I don't think this is the time I think this swim leg you've really got to go trying to get a wave out in front and maybe set yourself up where you can well use a little bit less energy on the ski just pick your course on the way out a nice wave on the way home and I think this is go time for these girls Naomi Scott knows it Lana Rogers knows it Lizzie Wellborn seems to know it as well and Maddie Dunn's worked her way past Emma Dick and so's Courtney Hancock so the two Northcliffe girls both wearing blue tops they go either side of the girl in pink, and here comes a wave. This is going to turn things on its head if any of the girls can get
get it. It stands up, it peaks. A couple of the girls try and go over the top, and it looks like none of them are going to go down it. And all that's done is taken a couple of girls from 15th or 16th place and put them on the front of this race. So a good move for some, and it looks like maybe Courtney Hancock's got the best of it so far. So what we can see at the moment, Josh, we're looking south, and what these girls are doing is they're swimming north. There is a big hole to the south of this course as we see another little bubble come through. Just gives the girls a lift, but doesn't give them enough to get down it. So these girls swimming back to the north, trying to stay out of the big hole. We have seen some waves roll through, though, out the back of that hole, and these girls are trying to put themselves back on the bank. For, the, for those watching at home, that big hole, you see that brownie kind of water running out to sea? That's the sand and white water being sucked back out by this rip. So the girls want to get out of that one as best they can out the back. And as the waves start to stand up like they did, for Gemma Smith there. They want to try and pick one across the hole on the inside. And here we go. There's going to be a couple on offer here. We're going to have two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we might as well have the, whole, the entire field on that one. That entire front group got an opportunity. Gemma Smith's gone from first back to 12th or 13th place when she missed it there. There's a couple standing in the shallows waiting for waves. There's a couple that's decided to get up and run. And it's just absolute chaos in the second leg of this opening Ironman. Kirsty Higgison's got one down at the bottom. And it looks like maybe Brielle Cooper's picked it up. The girl with some of the best surf skills in the business has put him on show and put herself into the lead of this race. And she will go up and through transition heading into the final ski leg in the lead. Well, Brielle Cooper has let us out, Josh. You talk about her skills. Whenever there's waves, she's in the mix. She manages to get it right. Young gun, Tiani Massey, the under-19 competitor there as well. Another under-19 in Naomi Scott. So girls with not a whole lot of experience, but certainly a lot of intensity and know they want to finish up as high as possible. Poor old Gemma Smith there went from the lead to a lot further back. Taylor Biscarig right behind her. We can see on the top right screen, Courtney Hancock, Emily Doyle, Jade Hardstaff, Bay Wildenstein, and Electra Outram there. Brittany Pierce comes up and around and hasn't she been a star this year? She's really gone from somebody who struggled to get herself into these Kellogg's finals to a regular round in, round out and she's just getting better round on round. Tiani Massey gets in her ski a little bit sideways and mixes up with Naomi Scott there. Yeah, so these girls very, very difficult at the third leg of an iron to carry that ski and run it into the water, particularly under fatigue as Hayley Cox comes around as well. Lizzie Wellborn's done quite well. Now she's headed left, Josh. She's trying to put herself in a little run out that's working out to the left and avoid the wave zone, which is breaking straight through the middle of this course. So basically for everybody watching at home, there's a big sandbank right in the middle of this course and a couple of little rips either side. And Naomi Scott goes off in the center there and you can see Lizzie Wellborn at the top in the yellow. She's shooting out at the moment. Just underneath her is Tiani Massey in the center, Kirsty Higgison. Then Lana Rogers on the blue, just sort of taking the lead. Lizzie Wellborn goes for it at the top, tries to punch through and gets through. Oh, Lana Rogers gets shot back. Brielle Cooper gets shot back. And all of a sudden, there's almost 20 girls on top of each other there. Lizzie Wellborn's the only one who snuck out at the moment. And we've had a couple go backwards. Danielle McKenzie's off. Naomi Scott's gone off for a second time. Lana Rogers has gone off. So it is absolute carnage at the moment. Oh, Kirsty Higgison punches through. And if you look at the top right screen there, Lizzie Wellborn's in green water, paddling a hell of a lot faster. Well, we see Lana Rogers. She's off her ski. She gets back on. So these these girls now have got their opportunity to go. All the girls on the bottom side of screen have got their opportunity to get out. And Lana Rogers, one of the girls up the front, is now way out the back, as is Naomi Scott, still getting hit. And the rest of our field is starting to work their way through. Lizzie Wellborn is out, Josh. Lizzie Wellborn went left. She made sure she stayed smart. She got her little outlet, and she gave herself an opportunity to go to the lead. That looks like a massive move. So to put things in perspective, Lizzie Wellborn out there went in fourth or fifth. The girl at the bottom of the screen with the grey, blue and green, Brielle Cooper, she went in first and that is how quickly these races can get turned on their head. Carly Nervin and Kirsty Higgison are in second and third there. Carly on the purple, Higgison on the white and light blue as we fly out to sea and that is the gap. Good decision making can get you there for Lizzie Wellborn. She made the decision to go left as she ran in. She jumped in the
in the rip, attacked a wave, went up and over, and she has got a 100-metre lead with just half a ski leg to go. Well, you don't have to be the fastest, but it does pay to be the smartest, and Lizzie Wellborn has done exactly that. A great read from Lizzie Wellborn. She would have watched the water with her coach, Scotty Thompson. They would have made the call that in that ski leg, with Lizzie's ski being down that left-hand side, she heads even further left to put herself in a little run out, and when she saw her opportunity, when she saw her gap, she lifted the rating and made sure she got through, and that has been the difference. Well, we talk about Scotty Thompson. A huge shout-out to him and the, the entire crew down there in North Bondi. They have come on in leaps and bounds in the last couple of years to become one of the strongest clubs in the country, and I guess they've been led by this girl, Lizzie Wellborn, and it's a great crew down there. He obviously made a great decision here, and we wish them all the best for the rest of the season because they are a very, very good showing at these Australian Championships. Lizzie Wellborn on yellow in one. Kirsty Higgison in the background in two. Carly Nerven in three. Emma Dick in four, Courtney Hancock in five, Electra Outram six on the pink, just going around the grey now. That is Gemma Smith in seven. And well, Lana Rogers got plenty of work to do. She's still making her way out to see as we take a look back. And she looked a little frustrated going through the surf there, but I don't think that helps your cause. When you get smacked, I can understand it, but it's not the move you want. And the girls are starting to find runners out the back. Somebody's got a great runner there, gone past two or three. And Emma Dix found one as well and gone up alongside. Side, Carly Nervous. See a few girls come down and run there. Josh, they'll work. They'll lift the rating and trying to work down this one. I can't pick it up at the moment. It might be Jade Hardstaff trying to work her way up into this one. Danielle McKenzie, we know her strength running the ski and ski paddling. So Danielle McKenzie starts to get into the mix, Josh. But we saw the carnage on the way out. And if you think there's going to be carnage on the way out, wait for the way in. These girls need to stay on top of their skis if they're going to give themselves every advantage advantage with these two second head starts. Well, Lizzie Wellborn looks like she's going to pick up the win and well be first off the line in race two, but out the back, that's where things are going to get interesting. They're all over the place. A couple of girls have stopped. Hardstaff lets it go. Dunn lets it go as well. Here comes a couple of big sets. Bay Wilton Stedden lets it go. Down the wave, Hayley Cox. Maddie Dunn's going to run down it. The girls pick up the pace. They're going to take off these very late. Oh, they all go sideways. Oh, Bay Wilton Stedden in the air. She was still in her ski when she went upside down. That is crazy carnage. She was still sitting in the seat when the ski went six foot in the air, Jack Hanson. You don't see it often, but when it happens, it's spectacular. I'm not sure she was sitting in the seat, Josh. She was hanging by her ankles under the ski. Fabulous. Fabulous footage there from Bay Wilden Sned and unfortunately not what she wants. She wants to stay on top of it and get back to the beach. But a little bit of excitement and a little bit of carnage, Josh, is great for the viewers. While Bay Wilden Sned was flying through the air, the rest of the field was flying under the arch. We've already had Emma Dick, Carly Nerven go through up and around. Brielle Cooper crosses the line. A really good job from Hayley Cox. Handled herself well on the way home. Maddie Dunn got the best seat in the house for Bay Wilden Sned's Flying Trapeze Act. Tiana Raymond fought her way back into it. Jade Hardstaff is there as well. Tiani Massey, she had a good start to this race, but the ski leg really let her down there. Taylor Piscara comes up and around, and we're at about 20 or 22 seconds. There she is. She's all right. Bay Wilton Sneddon, she did board, swim, ski, fly through the air, and manages to cross the line ahead of Brittany Pierce. Emily Doyle up and around. Danielle McKenzie did not have the race she wanted at all. Electra Outram. Lana Rogers very frustrated with her performance and she will go down the back of the field to start race two and Jack, what about race one? That was very, very interesting. There was a lot of carnage. There was a lot of action. And these girls are in for a big one as Ali Britton never really got into this one. Let's take a look. Northern will go off two. Higgison four. Dick six. Hancock eight. Cooper, she will go 10 seconds. Then Cox, Raymond, Hardstaff, Massey, Biscaric, Wilton Sneddon, Gemma Smith after leading early on, Brittany Pierce. Doyle McKenzie, Outram Rogers, Britain, and Naomi Scott, she's last. Ace two, there will be two second gaps from Lizzie Wellborn at the front, heading all the way down to Naomi Scott at the tail, and you can see those time gaps in between. Hayley Cox, what a performance there, top seven, very strong from her. Maddie Dunn in eight, she is looking to move into the lead of the overall series with Georgia Miller out, of course. Georgia Miller at her sister's wedding today, so we wish the entire Miller family all the best. And we will see her in round six, but 
Has she given up her chance to take home a maiden Nutrien Iron Woman Series, Jack? Well, I wouldn't say given up the chance, Josh. The chance is still there, and Georgia Miller will want that more than anything. But family comes first, and when a sister's wedding is on the same day, you've just got to go to the wedding. Of course she does. Off and away. Race two, the pursuit format. Catch me if you can. Lizzie Wellborn's gone. Carly Nerthen, Kirsty Higgison, Emma Dick is off. Then Courtney Hancock. Brielle Cooper there, off and away. Haley Cox, Maddie Dunn, Tian Raymond at 16 seconds there. Jade Hardstaff goes at 18 seconds. Tiani Massey at 20. Taylor Piscaric at 22. Bay Wilden Snedden off and away. Gemma Smith. Next is Brittany Pierce from Wanda. Emily Doyle from the Newport Club. Danielle McKenzie will be looking to get back into it. The Kiwi. Electra Outram at 34 seconds. The defending Australian champion, Lana Rogers, off and away is Ali Britton and Naomi Scott at 40 seconds. The gap is 40 from first to last. We're off in race number two. Well, Josh, swim, ski, board. And that 40-second gap, particularly for someone like Naomi Scott, could potentially be at least halved, if not more, with swim first. That's right. The swim could make a massive difference there. And you see the girls in about 10th and 11th place, like your Gemma Smiths. They've almost been caught by the girls at the back, your Naomi Scott. So a lot of drama already ready for these girls and it looks like on the far right hand side there Lizzie Wellborn's taken that line we saw her taking the first race and I don't know if it's played out that gap looks like it's closing up very very quickly back to Courtney Hancock who's moved her way through the field past Carly Nerthen and past Kirsty Higgison into second place well she's made a big move early Josh she well well rested made sure she worked very hard across that way to cross the bank and has now put herself not only up into second place but really pushing for the lead against Lizzie Wellborn. Lizzie Wellborn made the move to go north. We saw her use that on the ski, and I think it's really not paying off now. She's got to see Courtney Hancock coming up the inside very, very quickly and work across onto her feet to use the drag and use the wash. A great swim. You're spot on. I don't know if that was the right move from Lizzie Wellborn, but you can see her make the decision to cut back across and try and jump on the heels of Courtney Hancock there. The rest of the field spread out. And a couple of the gaps have grown, but I think most of the gaps have almost been eaten up. And from first to last, I'd say it's probably looking more like 25 to 30 seconds rather than a big 40. Well, it will be very, very interesting, Josh. And it will be waves on the way home that will make the biggest difference, particularly in this swim leg. If you can pick up a wave, you could potentially close at least 20 seconds. We see Lizzie Wellborn moved in across and swimming with Emma Dick there. So Emma Dick will get a little bit of assistance as Lizzie Wellborn works works very very hard to try and go with Courtney Hancock but it's all Courtney Hancock at this stage her rating is up she's moving away very very quickly Josh at this stage this looks like the Courtney Hancock of five or six years ago when she was at her absolute peak and I know she was looking for a big summer it's probably not been the one she's looked for so far she's been close but not quite good enough to win any of the rounds but this could be her day right here right now and she's got a good lead on Lizzie Wellborn Emma Dick in second and third place. It looks like Carly Nerven back in fourth there. Kirsty Higgison comes around the cans. Of Maddie Dunn swam her way actually up into fifth place at the moment. So a big move from Maddie Dunn there as she starts to work her way through the field. And she's gone up three places from where she started race number two. Well, Josh, we're looking at about 20 seconds now from when Courtney Hancock turned that first can. And what that means is those chases have probably closed the gap a little bit and certainly closed the gap on Lizzie Wellborn, who went off screen considering she gave a 40-second head start to Naomi Scott. Closed the gap. She halved the gap. And I know Naomi Scott's a great swimmer, so she's going to make most of her move in this opening leg. But a 20-second gap's big, and it looks like it's gone out to two or three seconds, maybe even more from first. Back to Lizzie Wellborn, Emma Dick in second and third. The girls starting to work their way through. And Maddie Dunn is up into fourth place. You can see her blue top, the far left-hand side. And as they start to work home, there's a bit of swell. And have a look at that turning can. The girls are on top of each other at the moment. Electra Outram 
snuck inside Tiani Massey, who tried to go over the top of her there. So very, very tight racing on the inside as the girls push very hard for home. Well, I think Brielle Cooper in the mix as well. Tian Raymond sitting on the feet of Maddie Dunn, and they're good feet to sit on. Dunn always seems to find a wave when she needs them, but Courtney Hancock is going to be the one first back into the wave zone. She swam away now and a little lift. Cooper was on that, as was Wellborn and Dunn, so a good little lift there. But at the moment, Hancock's probably opened up maybe a seven or eight second gap now, Josh. Courtney Hancock in one. You go straight back to Lizzie Wellborn alongside hers, Brielle Cooper. On the left-hand side of the screen's Emma Dick. At the top of that foursome there is Maddie Dunn. Then there's a gap back to Tian Raymond, who's swimming very, very strong at the moment. Maybe Lana Rogers has worked her way from the bottom half of the field up into the top half as well. So a, a great swim for her. And then they're really all over the place after that. There's a little wave on off of here. Can Courtney Hancock make something of it? No, it fills up and just doesn't stand up on the bank. You can see in the background there's some big, big swells on the far bank, but they're just not coming through on this one. Well, not at this stage, Josh. And here's a lift for our chasers. Tian Raymond almost works down a little one there. Another lift for Dunn. So the girls on the northern side or our left-hand side of screen don't seem to be getting the same lift. And Courtney Hancock just gets her fingers over the top of that one as a wave starts to build out the back. Out the back, there'll be one or two on this for sure. It starts to stand up, but every time it stands up, it just fills up again. I think one's down at two, three, four. It's going to wash over the top of Courtney Hancock. Can she pick it up broken? I don't know. She stands up, dives over it there, right into Tian Raymond. So Tian Raymond gets bumped off the back because Courtney Hancock stood up, didn't see her, and jumped on, but they're all on the sand, and what a turn up this opening leg has been. And as they go through transition, it's Lana Rogers who's gone from the back to the front just like that. What a swim leg from her to be in second place. It's Hancock from Rogers, Emma Dick there. Maddie Dunn's jumped four places from where she started to go up into fourth. And as they come through the transition, there is just seconds separating all these girls. So it's Dick, Dunn, Brielle Cooper, Lizzie Wellborn, our leader, and Tian Raymond. Well, Hancock worked very, very hard to open up a gap, and unfortunately, that was closed very, very quickly in the wave zone. Lizzie Wellborn about to pick up the ski as Tiani Massey runs under the arch. It'll be interesting to see whether Wellborn makes the same choice. It looks as though Hancock done as well as Emma Dick are choosing to run to the north or to the right hand side of our screen which was where Lizzie Wellborn snuck out in race one. It looks like everybody's watched that. They've all decided to do it as well. Maddie Dunn moves up into second place on the green ski. Emma Dick on the black and white stride but Lana Rogers has gone to the top. You can see Lana Rogers in the distance there has chosen the complete opposite line to everybody else so this is very very interesting. We'll see who's picked the right line, who's made the right decision and who's going to pay for it by getting smashed. Well Rogers is headed right Josh or south. She's decided on that left hand side of screen she's going to go to the other side the southern side of the course where there is a big hole and a big run out but whether or not these waves that break on that back bank actually let her through only time will tell out into open water at the moment. It looks like both lines have been pretty similar at the moment. Strong from Emma Dick early, and it would be something special if she could get a Maiden Kellogg's Iron Woman Series round victory right here at Surface Paradise. Maddie Dunn's won here before. She's on the green. Courtney Hancock as well, and that one wave has just smacked Lana Rogers, and she's decided to change lines. You can see her. She's put a big left-hand pedal down and decided to cut back across, and I don't think that was the right move, although it didn't pay off but it definitely didn't cost her much either. She's on the back of the pack. Well, everyone in the background has been absolutely obliterated by a couple of those sets, and it seems like this is now a race in two packs. Well, Josh, it certainly is. We've got seven girls out the back, seven girls in green water and working their way out to the cans. Emma Dick, our leader. Maddie Dunn sitting in two as they go past the board cans. Courtney Hancock, they're also in three. We've got Lizzie Wellborn, Tian Raymond in four and five. Brielle Cooper, six, with Lana Rogers tacking onto the back of that, that pack and in seven. That is all she rode at the moment. The only one we're missing, I guess, in this top pack, we've got the current Australian champion on the back, the defending series champion, a girl who's won here before in Maddie Dunn, the queen of the surf, Courtney Hancock, and, well, a couple of up-and-comers in Emma Dick, and 
Tian Raymond. It is an absolute pack of fire. These girls go around the outside turning can on the ski and they will just have the board leg to go when they get back to the beach. But if it's anything like the ski leg we saw in the opening race, there's plenty of carnage to come. I wonder if Baywild and Stedden's recovered from flying through the air, still seated in her ski on the way home in race one. Well, Josh, Cirque du Soleil called. They want Baywild and Stedden to join the acrobatics team. And you spoke there of uh, Emma Dick and Tian Raymond. Certainly not real young in terms of up-and-comers, but they've done their time in the series and they're very, very talented competitors and talented girls. And I'm sure maybe one of them here is going to stand up and probably get their best result ever. I'm going to say maybe breakthrough this year for those two. They've really been at the front end. It's been a good move for Tian Raymond under your coaching at Alexandra Headland there. And Emma Dick goes to Mermaid Beach under Mike Jaynes and it looks like it's paying off as the girls start to work the runners on the way home. Courtney Hancock again. She's looking very, very dangerous. She goes to the lead straight past Emma Dick. Gets the runners. Tian Raymond moves up past Maddie Dunn and into equal third place there as the girls. You can see Dunn on the green. Put the power down. The nose starts to dip and she goes down a runner. Tian Raymond does the same and Emma Dick's gone from first to fourth just like that. And Courtney Hancock, she snuck away in the swim. She snuck away in the ski. Could this be her day and the return of the queen of surf sports? Well, she's headed well, well south, Josh. Well down on this course as Lizzie Wellborn lifts that rating to work up and past and underneath Brielle Cooper who comes off the back of that one. Emma Dick spends too much time looking backwards for the next run and Lizzie Wellborn sneaks up and underneath. Will she come oh, over the top of this go one late. and join? She's going to go she Raymond. Doesn't. She doesn't. So Raymond chasing Hancock at this stage. They will be one and two. Maddie Dunn comes over the back and tries to work over the top of the wave. Tian Raymond is on alongside Lizzie Wellborn. Tian Raymond's gone into the lead here. She just put her head down, paddles straight, and it looks like Courtney Hancock is a long, long way down the course. She's going to have to run back, and great racing from Tian Raymond. She just went straight and hard and didn't worry about what anyone else was doing. Brielle Cooper's done a solid job there as well, heading into the final board leg, and Lizzie Wellborn, we know she's one of the best board paddlers in the business. She she is close enough if she's good enough here. And can Tian Raymond hang on? She goes round in the lead in one. Emma Dix hung into second place there in two. Courtney Hancock up into three. Lizzie Wellborn four. Maddie Dunn in five. Brielle Cooper in six. And Lana Rogers in seven. And that is the lead group. And there is a huge gap back to the rest of them. And I can almost guarantee our winner is going to come from these first seven girls. Well, very interesting, Josh. We saw Emma Dick pick up her board just after Tian Raymond. Brielle Cooper has decided to head to the north, as did Tian Raymond, but it was Dick who decided to take a straighter line, and we see they're done heading to the north. Cooper heading to the north, along with Lizzie Wellborn, but a slight lead to Tian Raymond. Could be the difference sneaking through this wave zone. Gemma Smith's broken away from that group, and she's moved her way up into eighth place. The girl who finished second in the last round, Kirsty Higgison's up into ninth. Another top ten result will be great for her summer so far. You can see Tian Raymond sits up that pink nose board popped and on the top of your screen there Lizzie Wellborn on the yellow starts to work her way through and this is going to be a real battle Courtney Hancock's there Maddie Dunn is there Brielle Cooper's there all these girls can paddle very very fast and Lizzie Wellborn's just been smacked she falls off the side there and Tian Raymond tries to sneak over this one pushes hard the rest of the girls oh Courtney Hancock rolls Dunny gets smashed Lizzie Wellborn pops over Brielle Cooper's just behind and just like that Tian Raymond goes back into the lead the the other girls thought they had a little sniff of her, but she is out into green water and Maddie Dunn is chasing hard now. Well, not out clean, Tian Raymond. May still have a couple of little waves. She's just managing to sneak over the top as oh, Dunn Courtney and Hancock, Hancock have to roll. Oh, well, well board, gets belted backwards, loses about 15 or 20 metres, Josh and loses two or three places. So it looks as though Hancock still getting hit. Cooper and Dunn have now snuck out into green water and chasing Tian Raymond. Lana Rogers has got smacked as well. The surf doesn't look big, but it's so powerful here at Surface Paradise. Those little waves, they can come through and absolutely obliterate you if you are not on song. And well, Tian Raymond's out in front and there's some girls chasing her at the moment, but she has got a big, big gap and she's never won a Kellogg's Nutrigrain Ironwoman series 
series round. This could be a first, and she's got the lead in the final leg of the second race of the Pursuit format, and she it's her race to lose at this point. Well, the pace looks on. Tian Raymond looks as though she's lifting her rating, Josh, certainly higher than I've seen her do in training for a long time. So Tian rating up and away at this stage, leading her Kellogg's race and could be the first one she ever wins, but Maddie Dunn is one person chasing very, very hard and is one person you probably don't want to be too close. Former training partners at Mooloolaba maybe five years ago and these two gone to different clubs now, but they're rivals and Maddie Dunn, she looks like she's closing that gap. You can see her and this could almost be the series for Maddie Dunn. She's sitting in second at the moment. Georgia Miller's not here. A race win here would be something huge for her. Put her in the lead and it would, well, it would almost guarantee a podium finish overall. Brielle Cooper trying to work her way back towards the top end of the point score. She's inside the top 10, but not having the title defense she wants. She's in third at the moment. And that group of seven that were all over each other just a few moments ago have been exploded all over the ocean because there's big gaps back to Courtney Hancock, back to Lizzie Wellborn, back to Lana Rogers. But let's concentrate on the front. Tian Raymond's turn for home. Maddie Dunn's coming after, and Raymond looks like she's tiring at the moment. That rating just seems like it's dropped ever so slightly as she gets on a good runner and Dunn's picked up an even better one behind her. Look at that from Maddie Dunn. Just works that swell and closes or halves oh, the gap, Josh. Massive, Another swell massive. coming through now and it looks like Dunn is trying to stay up high on the course. Oh, she goes runners. up and under Raymond. So now it's Dunn in the lead just like that. A matter of seconds and Tian Raymond looks to be in dead water. She's not moving anywhere near as quick as Maddie Dunn working these swells. Well. She just can't seem to find a runner. Just like that, she's down on the stomach, a sign that she might be getting tired. And Maddie Dunn's still on the knees. Two runners like that, she went straight past her. And Maddie Dunn's found a third. That third runner, that third runner could turn into a wave. She's almost claimed it. Maddie Dunn went, thank you very much. Two runners a wave, and I'll go from second to first, and first on the point score in the Kellogg's Nutrigrain Iron Woman Series. And just like that, Maddie Dunn has stolen victory from Tian Raymond. Brielle Cooper's got a wave as well, and that is tough stuff. And maybe just a little bit of experience for Maddie Dunn. She is up and running. She's getting the rev up from Wally Williams as she goes up the beach. And she won here six years ago at Surface Paradise Beach. She's going to do it for a second time. High fives all round. Maddie Dunn claims round five of the Nutrigrain Iron Woman Series. She was unstoppable in that final leg. And she will be our leader of the Nutrigrain Iron Woman Series. Maddie Dunn gets it done. Tian Raymond, she'll be disappointed, but that is her best ever result in a Nutrigrain Iron Woman Series race. Second place, hugs all round. They're all very, very happy with that. And Brielle Cooper will not be disappointed with a third place finish and a spot on the podium. She was very strong towards the end of that one and may just be finding form as we get to the championship end of the season. Brielle Cooper rounds out the podium. Dunn, Raymond, Cooper, one, two, three at Surface Paradise. And what a race it was. Lizzie Wellborn makes her way up a fourth place finish after battling sickness for a couple of rounds. She'll be happy with that and she looks strong all day long. Courtney Hancock will be disappointed because she was on fire early in this race leading. Gemma Smith climbed out of the doldrums and dragged herself up into the top seven in this race. A great performance from her. And just a couple of waves to Emma Dick and Lana Rogers have really cost her. Tiani Massey was very strong as well. Great performance from the young gun, just an under 19. So we will remember that name because she will be around for a very, very long time. That is for sure. So Rogers gets seven, Dick gets eight. Haley Cox, great performance to finish inside the top 10 in nine there. A good finish for her. Taylor Piscaric and Kirsty Higgison. Jade Hardstaff as well coming up and around. There's Higgison. She'll finish inside the top 10 after finishing second last. Oh, and Piscaric almost got cleaned up by a ski there. It looks like Hardstaff will get there just in front of Piscaric from the Manly Club and inside the top 12. So good performances all around. And look how tired these girls are. They are absolutely shattered. There's Massey. I called her earlier on. And Nathan Smith putting hand signals up there. That's for Brittany Pierce. Emily Doyle crosses the line. She is finished in 13th place and a strong result from a young gun, just an under 19. Allie Britton worked her way up from, well, 20th on the start line. 
inside to 14th, so seven spots. She's picked it up. Carly Northern went backwards in the final, but it was a tough day all round across Massey. Danielle McKenzie Pierce and Bay Wilden Sneddon there. And let's take a look at the result. Maddie Dunn gets it done and becomes the first multiple winner in the Iron Woman series so far this summer. She's gotten two round wins and she will be atop the point score after five rounds there. Cox Hardstaff, Higgison, Biscaric, McKenzie, Pierce, Sneddon, Outram and Scott. Wow, what a performance. What an achievement. Maddie Dunn, round five winner, Kellogg's Nutri-Grain Ironwoman. How was it out there? Oh, it was hard. I'll tell you what, after that first one, I thought we have to go around again. This is ridiculous. I mean, it's hot out there. Conditions are tough and I was lucky, so it was good. Yeah, but good competitors create their own luck. And let's talk about that. Uh, obviously, two races, but that last leg. Yeah, Tian Raymond in front, chasing her down. What was going through your mind around the cans? Oh, I was hurting, but I thought i got to get her. I mean, if I can win this one, I can set myself well up for the last round and hopefully take it out. But, I mean, it's unlucky that Georgia was near to perform and try and get her best result as well. But, yeah, it's good. Now, I love a good claim. And the claim on the, the wave when you took off, did you know you were home? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I looked behind. I made sure. I was like, thank God. But, yeah, it's good. I know your handlers are a little bit worried as the second wave is catching, oh. but uh, unstoppable performance. What does it mean to win a round of the Colors Nutri going on, woman? I mean, it means a lot. I mean, some girls out there have won series and never won a round. I mean, it honestly means so much to me, and, yeah, it's good. We're super proud of it. I'm sure the BMD Northlip are as well. Probably our series leader, we need to check that. But on behalf of everyone here, well done. Maddie Dunn, you are the champion. Thank you. Well, we'll check that right now. And it is, well, on top, Maddie Dunn. Kirsty Higgison, her, well, 10th place finish, enough to move her into second. And Brielle Cooper into third. The big talking point, though, Georgia Miller in fifth place. She only has four results. So while she's a fair way down, the overall rankings. She's got four results against everybody else's five, and we take five for your final point score. You drop around, and Jordan Mercer still sitting inside the top 20. We'll be back after the break with the men.